December 6th that Occupy the encampment was raided. It became apparent that we were going to get the push from Duncan Plaza. We started looking towards uh, some sort of fallback position, you know. And what's our next step? Uh, uh, what do we do? How do we organize and do our actions without a place, without a central meeting place? So we wound up coming up with the idea of getting a warehouse. It would give us the meeting space, rally point, a uh, place to build a community workshops, which we've been building. Uh, we've got a mechanic shop that needs to be straightened out. We've got, uh, we've got a woodworking shop. We've got a bicycle shop. We've got a digital media workshop. Um, we're going to have like a computer building workshop here in the near future, as well as many workshops. We've got a little painting, painting workshop, an art studio right over here. First got, I first kind of started using my uh, skills, you know, just using, doing what I know for the occupation. Uh, built an information booth and then, uh, and then a walk-down pantry for the community kitchen. And then somebody suggested, hey, we should build a stage. And it was New Orleans. It seemed like a no-brainer. And, and the rest kind of, all this, all this kind of came from that, from that stage. That's, that's the very stage back there. On February 29th, when Occupy Portland issued the shutdown the Corporations Day, uh, the corporation that we chose was BP. And that was when the Tent Monsters first made their appearance. They were average camping tents that were exposed to core exit, which mutated them horribly. And we had people come all from all over the coast, from all over Florida, came here to protest because BP was having its trial. BP wants to put out all this, do this whole big PR campaign. Oh, the Gulf is beautiful. Go swim in Alabama and blah, 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 blah. And, and it's, it's, it's a crock of shit. It, it's really a crock of shit. I mean, you know, we've got, you know, we've still got scientists monitoring, like, these giant plumes of oil in the Gulf. We've got, like, these plumes. They just kind of hover, like, 40 feet below the surface. It's a giant cloud of oil. And uh, uh, we've got, and, and uh, Corex did so much break it down as it just makes it a little bit, makes it heavy enough to sink, you know. So a lot of that oil just sunk to the bottom. Every time there's a storm, it gets churned up again and gets washed in wind. BP poisoned the entire Gulf, horribly, horribly. Hi there. This is Small Affair. Tomorrow, Barack Obama will be in New Orleans, and there's a benefit for him at House of Blues at 3.30. Unfortunately, it costs $250 to go and see Obama. So we're going to Chalkupy Obama. So here's a message to Obama. It says, hey, Obama, make BP clean up the Gulf, and 2 p.m. Wednesday, we are totally going to occupy Obama. The National Urban League is having a three-day Occupy the Vote conference with Obama, and we couldn't afford the $250 to, to, to tell Obama our demand, so we had this idea that we would occupy our demands, and that hopefully ran, like people who were walking by could grab some chalk and could voice their, their, their demands or their concerns to Obama. It is summer in New Orleans, so we had one of the flash floods that comes in the middle of the day. There was a horrible thunderstorm like right at 2 o'clock. Like they couldn't have timed it better. So we met and we went down to the French Quarter. It was pouring rain and we had to wait. Oh, yeah, President Obama will be visiting the House of Blues in the French Quarter, 3.30 today, for a fundraiser. They call the fundraiser Occupy the Vote. Shell Oil will be sponsoring this event. And it's worth noting that uh, BP, uh, last time around, was one of Obama's major contributors. So we're out here to let people know that 
one, this is not a real Occupy event, and two, to let people know that if Obama really was with the 99%, there are all sorts of things he could do immediately, like order the withdrawal of U.S. troops from Afghanistan, issue an executive order, uh, calling on the federal government to not enforce uh, the NDAA law, and to conduct serious investigations of, of the fraud and corruption on uh, Wall Street. One protester in the rain equals one million in the sun. <laughs> we fight against these racist ideas that try to, these fascists that try to split the working class. No, we say unify the working class to fight the real enemy, the ruling class, the top one percent, who send us into these criminal wars. Who can hold? Who can hold? Please sign. Please sign. Please grab one. Please grab one. So then the rain stopped and a bunch of us went to the amphitheater and there were a lot of signs. And we realized actually that chalk worked better wet. <laughs> People started drawing with chalk and writing messages to Obama. <laughs> the move on .org thought we would like to go and be a, you know be there to hi ah, oh it's the president oh my god it's the president we're like all right it's the president let's talk to this man so uh uh this is what it's about folks whatever side you're on you're on the wrong side i think it was maybe the manager or someone of the french market came over and explained that it was private property and that it was a public sidewalk that was private property. Okay. You know, y'all need to get something and, ch and clean it. Okay. If you don't want to clean it, then we're going to do what we have to do. Uh, it is considered a felony in New Orleans. Shock is considered, it's, it's I'm asking... It's defacing property, ma'am. It's defacing property. Um, can you... I'm a, I'm a journalist, so I'm writing an article about yes, this, so I'd like to be able to look up the actual you please, law. You can look it up. It was passed about six months ago. Okay. This is considered graffiti. That it's shock a, falls it's under... It's I'm Yes, ma'am. This, just so everyone knows, this um, this is a public sidewalk that's part of a private corporation, so we've been asked to disperse from here. Once we joined Occupy, they started passing all these laws. You know, you can't you can't put flyers up around town. You can't chalk. You know, uh, basically any medium we try to use to put out our message, they're trying to outlaw or control or just ban altogether. Yeah. I don't want this to stop. I don't want the 99%, the Occupy movement, to stop. I want people to continue to fight the fight and to keep meeting one another, talking to people in their communities, and to not let this fire die. I, God, that sounds cliche and dumb. I want it. I want this movement to not stop.